The Han emperors, especially in Wu, were highly structured societies. The emperors tried to control the people that they conquered. Obviously, if you conquer a group of land or a group of people, you need to keep them under control. And the way to do that is to get them to assimilate, which we'll talk about in a minute. The Chinese people believed the emperor had divine authority, so they accepted his power because of that. If he is a direct communication to the gods and to the spirits, you're pretty much going to listen to the guy who's got that power. And the emperor is the only one that had that power. To keep now, to keep any empire working, or any country for that matter, taxes had to be levied among peasants, farmers, and merchants. The government needs money to expand, pay the soldiers, to build roads, just like any government does. So there were taxes that were incurred. Additionally, peasants also had to give one month of labor on military services each year. Now, that was considered part of their taxes as well. However, if they needed to go more than a month because of a war, they could do that. Or they could order that. But typically, they were required only one month a year, except for extenuating circumstances. Emperor Widu looked for and provided education for scholars of Confucianism. He wanted to hire the best and the smartest people he could for his job positions, for his bureaucracy. So he set up these schools, and he would send students. This, these would be schools that would have to be uh, paid for, but students could go, learn about Confucianism, learn about what they needed to learn, and then later on they would take a test and that test will determine whether or not they could get a government job. Unfortunately, because the schools did charge money, usually the only people that got the, in the school or got the positions were those that could afford school. It was occasional where it occasionally happened where you would get peasants or people of a lower class to get enough money to go to school, but usually that didn't happen. This system lasted actually until 1912 A.D. This idea of people getting the job that they deserve because they're the smartest. So it wasn't even that long ago that this system was, was put out of place. Basically uh, during the uh, beginning of World War I when the uh, Chinese Empire was overthrown. All right population swelled under the Han Dynasty's ruling. All that means is it got large. As you expand, open up your lands, well, more people were probably living there, putting them under the umbrella of the Chinese Empire. Because of this large population growth, agriculture was a key to success and for the survival of the people. It even got to the point where the government took over control of salt, mining, ironworks, minting coins, and brewing alcohol. After a while, they did end up even creating their own silk trades and their own silk industry to compete with foreign traders. The thing to remember here also is, in order to promote people to get into agriculture, the government had to give the people something. So the government would say, if you have a very large farm, you could get out of paying taxes if you had a certain size of farm. However, that found to be or that became troublesome as the years went on. What would happen is as families or uh, dads die off, they would it was a tradition for the family to break apart the land into even parts for each of the male heirs. While well, you do that enough time, the farms become smaller and smaller. And the tax break for the peasants, or for the farmers, was only for large farms. As the farms got smaller and smaller, the people would start having to pay taxes. And the peasants, not having enough money to pay taxes, would end up uh, having a problem because they couldn't afford it, creating a social discord between the peasants and the emperor.
All right. The Han unifies Chinese culture. Government, uh, the Chinese government encouraged assimilation, getting people to adapt to their culture. This is done partly by recording history for people to read. Bao Zai, who was a writer, actually wrote Lessons for Women, telling women to be humble and obedient. That's kind of similar to what we do in a lot of countries, whereas in order to get people to understand our cultures, to respect our cultures and our history, you teach it to them. You teach it to them in a way so that it becomes part of their life as well, thereby making them part of your society, even though they might have been born somewhere else. To give you an example, even in America today, to pass the uh, immigration test, to become an American citizen, you must take U.S. history courses as one of the requirements. So even today, some of these things are going on to get people to assimilate and become accustomed to the culture that they're moving into. Back to the women. Women uh, lived quiet lives at home. They dedicated their lives uh, to their families per Confucian teachings. Women with rich, rich husbands, though, tended to be more educated and sometimes ran small shops or practiced medicine. While the husband's out working, getting money, the wife also is able to tend uh, tend the counter for other types of funds. Uh, women, typically, if they were richer, were a little bit more educated than the men were. But it's also something to remember that it was also the women originally that did most of the education for the kids if those kids could not afford to go to these schools that I mentioned earlier. The fall of the Han in their eventual return. After a while, there became an, a large imbalance between the rich and the poor, caused by customs, uh, the customs of the Hun Empire. Land, as I mentioned before, was divided up among descendants equally upon owner's death. As time went by, the families owned less land. Large farms had no taxes. Small farms did. The government pressed small farms for more taxes, but, the, but they couldn't provide it. This created discord and problems between the rich and the poor. Eventually, a guy by the name of Wang Mang took control of the empire after several weaker leaders from the Han Dynasty. His economic policies and redistribution of land angered powerful uh, landowners and hurt the economy. This led to the assassination of Wang in 23 AD and the Hang family took over again. Wang Mang believed that in order for the country to heal itself you needed to make the rich and the poor more equal. One of those methods was to take all the land, divide it up equally among everybody. However, the rich people, they were still rich uh, then, um, just did not like that. They had all this money, they had all this land, and now they're told they don't have it anymore. We gotta give it up. So after a while, the rich kinda had a problem with that. In addition to the fact that Wang Meng minted more coins, well, with any type of economic system, if you make more money, they're going to charge you more cost to purchase things. If there's more money available, they're going to raise their cost. And that's exactly what happened. So initially, it was good. All this money was flowing around. And then the businesses said, well, hey, let's jack up our prices. And that's what they did. So in the end, in regards to e economics, it didn't help anything. And Wang Meng was basically a failure. After peace was restored with the Hans back in power, the first, the, this would be the second part of the Hans Empire. The, sec, the beginning of the second part, it started prosperous. People were happy. However, this empire went back to their old ways, divvying up the land based on the rich, all of their traditional customs in place, thereby splitting up the poor and the rich once again. During this time, though, the government continued to expand, but eventually the same social imbalances and political problems and social unrest led to the fall of the Han Empire by 220 AD.
All right. That is the end of our part three of our notes. Again, this goes with worksheet six, which you should have picked up during class. Feel free to view this video again if you need to clarify any materials or fill in any of your blanks from your notes. If you have any questions, please let Mr. Vincent know, and have a good day.